Liverpool absolutely embarrassed at home in the Premier League against Crystal Palace losing at Anfield for only if I'm not mistaken the second game in about over 50 games for Liverpool at home after losing last Thursday to Atalanta at home in the Europe in the Europa League now Liverpool lose at home to Crystal Palace one nil with a goal of Eze they tried so hard to reach the goal. They created a lot of chances, but they were an embarrassment. To be honest, some of these players, they are an embarrassment for Liverpool Football Club. A lot of them, the amount of chances, the amount of chances, excuse me, that Liverpool have missed in this game is absolutely beyond my imagination. Uh, to be honest with you, Liverpool have lost the title already. They have fallen behind now. Arsenal play Aston Villa. Of course, I'm recording this before the game starts for Arsenal. But oh my God, it's, it's just a domino effect. And we spoke about this before, way before, when Liverpool announced that Jurgen Klopp, when he announced that he's leaving, that it might be a domino effect. And it might have started with the Man United game that they played. And here we go. They lose at home against Crystal Palace. We'll talk about the game. We'll talk about the chances they missed. But if you are here now, hit that like button on this video. It's very important that you hit that like button underneath the video. It helps the channel massively. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. But looking at the game... Of course, some blame goes to Jurgen Klopp, but the majority of the blame goes to the players. Because the goal that Crystal Palace scored, Endo was literally watching Eze running right next to him, and he didn't want to follow the runner. The midfield completely failed in the first half to control Eze, especially on that left side with Tarek Mitchell. Very, very good plan by Crystal Palace, exploiting that midfield. Endo didn't have his greatest game, the Japanese. McAllister didn't have his greatest game. And Virgil van Dijk slipped. Mateta almost made it 2-0. And Robertson, absolutely brilliant, brilliant, brilliant clearance. Goal line clearance by an inch. But come on going forward the amount of chances and i'm gonna highlight one player darwin nunez the 80 million euro player the guy that we thought he improved but again he let liverpool down he started today chances he missed Decision making in the first half, clear chance for him. Could have squared it to Muhammad Salah, could have been a tap in. Absolutely abysmal decision making. Absolutely abysmal decision making. For the majority of the game, choosing the wrong pass, choosing the wrong run, not shooting when he should shoot, passing when he, sh passing when he should shoot, shooting when he should pass. The guy is not good enough to lead the line for Liverpool Football Club. It's a very simple thing. It was very obvious from the beginning. He doesn't have the technical ability or the football IQ to play for Liverpool Football Club. He might score some wonder goals like what he did in the Cup or in the Europa League or some goals in the Premier League, but the guy is not good enough for Liverpool. And also Mohamed Salah, my Egyptian guy. Another disappointing performance by Mohamed Salah. Missed a couple of chances. Yes, created a couple of passes. But that's not what you expect from your superstar. That's not. With all due respect. It's not what you expect from your superstar, from your talisman, for the most important player at Liverpool. Not good enough. 
Should he go in the summer? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe it's time. Maybe it's time to move on. For Liverpool fans, maybe it's time they accept that they have to move on. And he has to move on as well. Maybe in hindsight, they should have accepted the money from Saudi Arabia. And I'm saying this because I believe that Liverpool would still have made top four in the Champions League if they don't have Mohamed Salah. A lot of people disagree with me, but that's my opinion. And in the game, Jurgen Klopp in the second half, I can't fault the guy in the second half. Changed, made changes tactically, offensively in the midfield, put Sabozla in, who again, another cameo appearance that he doesn't offer anything. Yes, he made a couple of runs and passes. He isn't offering anything special, Dominic Sabozla. Again, off the bench for 45 minutes. He didn't offer anything different. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Cody Gakpo offered more from that left side. Dominic Sabozlai offered nothing. Liverpool should take a hard look at themselves. And let's look at the stats of the game. It's not that Crystal Palace didn't have chances. They did. They had almost, almost the same amount of chances on target then Liverpool, close to 2xG, they had, basically, I thought they had three clear-cut chances. They scored one, they missed two. One of them is the clearance by Robertson. Another, especially in the first half, defensive performance by Liverpool where they were wide open at some times. Two on two, three on three. Another day where Liverpool defense were not good enough, especially in the first half. Second half, Crystal Palace completely, they wanted to defend their lead. And they sat deeper a little bit. The coach made subs, took Olisi out, took Izzy out later, right? So they, they wanted to defend the lead. But in the first half, defensively, they were not good. Liverpool, not good enough. But you, you got to watch this game and you look at one thing. Is offensively, what is happening to Liverpool? The amount of chances that Liverpool forwards miss is astonishing. Nunes clear inside the six-yard box, hitting it ferociously towards the goalkeeper, Dean Henderson. Why didn't you pick an angle? Why didn't you pick a corner? He didn't. Couple of chances, a little bit by Jota. Maybe could have, could have hit it better, but Nathaniel Klein, great block. Mohamed Salah at the end, uh, blocked by Tarek Mitchell. And then Curtis Jones missing on one on, on one. From about 40 yards out, completely missed the target. It's not even a save. Liverpool, on paper, should have won this game. But they didn't. And I think if we, if we look at the standing, of the table. If Arsenal, Man City now are two points ahead of Liverpool. Better goal difference, by the way, by Man City. Better goal difference, huh? So basically three points ahead of Liverpool. Arsenal can go three points ahead of them. Of course, recording this before the Arsenal game. Three could have been three points. I think it's going to be very hard for Liverpool to catch both teams. Even if they win the next six games, who guarantees that both Arsenal and Manchester City will drop points? It's a chance. If, and also I want to speak about, if you are going to lose against Crystal Palace at home, what are you going to do against Everton away? What are you going to do against Fulham away? If you lose at home to Crystal Palace, what are you going to do away? This team, you look at Liverpool, they don't look like champions. They do not look like champions at all by the way at all they don't look like champions abysmal by liverpool for front line and the question that i want you to comment in after this video how do you see the future of liverpool jurgen klopp is leaving at the end of the season my only leave with carabao cup most likely than not it is looking 
like they're gonna leave with the Carabao Cup only this season. Um, of course, the talk about Amarim coming to Liverpool. How do you see these players performing under Amarim? Are these players good enough to build on with a new coach? Or was Jurgen Klopp getting the best out of them? Make sure to like the video, subscribe if you're new to the channel, and we'll see you guys soon. Appreciate everybody that watched, and we'll see you guys soon.